few things have captured the imagination of the general public like driverless cars. They've been the holy grail for car manufacturers for over a decade now, but most of us still haven't seen one on the road. However, a groundbreaking trial of connected and autonomous vehicle technology recently took place in Milton Keynes. Following its successful Coventry trial in 2017, the UK Autodrive project has been using public roads and car parks in the Buckinghamshire town to show how connected and autonomous vehicles could offer a number of societal benefits, including making the search for parking spaces much easier in the future. The three project partners, Jaguar Land Rover, Tata Motors and Ford, also carried out their first public road trials of two connected car safety features, an emergency vehicle warning system and an electronic emergency brake light. We're going to speak to Chris Holmes from Jaguar Land Rover and Andrew Harris from Tata Motors about some of the latest advancements in vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication technology and how improvements to connectivity in cars could benefit road users and wider society. We're very interested in connectivity in terms of enhancing the capability of the autonomous car. There's a lot of information that could be available to make the sensing and the environmental awareness that much better. What connectivity brings to the consumer, I think, are features which are going to be bringing improvements in safety and convenience, primarily, with lots of knock-on effects like improved emissions, reduced congestion, but also, if you think about it, a lot of driving around looking for parking spaces is generating lots of local pollution and also lots of local congestion. So, you know, there's lots of potential for these, uh, these features to impact our lives on lots of different ways. Awareness of this potential is firmly established in the public consciousness and we all want to see the technology start to appear on our roads. But there are still risks. Every time that an automated car is involved in a crash, it makes the news. However, engineers are working every day on making these cars safer and improving the technology used to make them work. Sensors are really good but they still have limitations. Extreme weather conditions can be challenging. Surface recognition can also be challenging. So there's a lot of effort going into new sensor technologies, but also algorithms and the software and the capability to analyze what those sensors are telling you. There's still quite a lot of work to do for us to make sure that we've got robust systems in place, but ultimately the cars will be safe. And that's, that's why a lot of the governments are very interested in this because of the number of fatalities and serious accidents on the road. And if autonomy can offer a significant improvement to that, that's a really, really good thing. I think in general there's, there's more awareness of connectivity in the world, Internet of Things for example, that's cascading down into cars and you know, when consumers become more savvy um, that's when manufacturers are going to start putting the functions in. In the near future V2X features are going to become part of the NCAP suite of requirements and that means that um, that's going to influence the end cap stars that a manufacturer gets for their cars and that means that consumers are going to buy the car. So you know, once you start to get that kind of pull, then manufacturers will start to put the functions in. From a user point of view, it's making sure that you've got robust communication into the car so the driver is seeing it, you know, you're not blocked by the lorry that's right next to you. But I guess, again, from a highways point of view, they're also sort of looking at, well, how, how can you get this information into the car in a way, A, which is robust, but B, is cost efficient. But also bear in mind that when you've got an autonomous car, then the car may actually be acting on that information as well. So if you've got a, a secure data source, you could actually then use that uh, in the autonomous car then to make decisions. So, you know, if the speed changes or there's a lane closed or something like that, then the car can actually take some action. There's probably a little bit of work to do around regulation. There are organisations in Europe and the US who are standardising specifications. Councils need to put infrastructure in. But I think uh, the technology itself is, is really nothing new and it's just down to, you know, once some manufacturers start putting it in, then everybody else will put it in and there'll be a critical mass and pretty soon it'll be everywhere.
Autonomous cars are already being trialled in parts of the US, and the UK government has announced its own plans to begin testing driverless vehicles in Britain later this year. We're still a long way from realising their full potential, but the future of our cars is definitely heading in the right direction.